hi and welcome to part 2 of getting a started video so we are starting from the point where we left in part 1 where we do have this schematic of a low pass filter initialized with some values in variables for inductors and capacitors now in order to make changes on this schematic and and uh, see a simultaneous change in response the the nice facility in ADS is to do a real-time tuning which can be activated by going to this icon called tuning and once we click on that icon a window pops up for the tuning parameters dialog box and here we can select all the items which needs to be tuned and effect of which uh, needs to be seen on onto data display so once we are done with selecting all the options here let us go to the data display dialog box and from here let's adjust so that we can see both of these together now all the elements which we have selected for tuning appears nicely in a list and we can change their minimum and maximum parameters so have some kind of room to manipulate the values now once we start as you can see right now the data display doesn't show up a very nice low pass filter type of response and that's primarily because the values are not as per the requirement and using this window we can pick up any slider bar and we can start the tuning so that we get a desired change in the circuit behavior so as you can see while I'm moving the slider the data display is changing almost in real time an effect of which can be seen on to my circuit performance now once we we are through with this we can um, do some of the manipulations saving the intermediate state files for example right now we are in some condition number one and data display seems to be something like a low pass filter but the y-axis gets clipped at around minus 1.4 db so we can select that graph and press this out a scale key so that we can see little more dynamic range in the graph and we can continue tuning as per our, our wish by changing some of these parameters we can find out some of the good um, you know parameters match which allows us to do a low pass filtering in a more effective manner so as you can see right now in my stage I have a pretty decent low pass type of response and I can rescale this plot again to see the behavior of this low pass while I'm tuning the circuit a lot of time it may be desired to store some of the intermediate states so that we do not lose out on the effort which we have already invested in in order to do that when you reach a particular stage we can always click on this button called store and it will give some uh, name tag to that store and we can give our own name track like trial one or something so in this case I'm accepting whatever default comes up and say ok what this step will do is to store the temporary data of all these variable values and it will imprint the trace on the graph so that when we move the marker uh, for these variables uh, plus and minus I can still see the original value of of the return um, of, the, of the saved trace on the graph this will help us guiding um, whether we are moving into the better stage or we are doing the performance a uh, little harm than what it should be alright so while we are tuning uh, let's assume we we get the final response as in memory 1 we can recall uh, those traces by simply kicking out this recall and selecting memory 1 to call it back now there's no limit how many traces you can save um, you can go on saving and finally select one final value uh, which will help you do some of these analysis right so once we <coughs> finalize the values to be used I can click on this update schematic <coughs> which in turn will update the values on my schematic while I'm tuning ADS is not touching the original circuit it is just working on a copy of the same right now let's click update the schematic and close out the tuning box so while I do that you can see the previously saved file all, all those things gets flushed off and if you come back to the schematic you have the values updated nicely on, on your graph sorry on your schematic so once we simulate this we can see the latest uh, response and if you want to continue tuning further you can again click on the tuning box it will start from the last stage where we left out the tuning box there are various nice things you can do while in ADS doing S parameters one of them is to switch on some of the parameters for measurements by double clicking on the S parameter dialog box 
and then going to parameters tab which allows you to uh, show up Y parameters, Z parameters, group delay and so on. If you are designing certain amplifiers uh, like low noise amplifier where we need to do noise figure analysis we can go to noise parameter tab and switch on calculate noise as well. So in this case the noise parameters will not be valid so let's switch on group delay by clicking on this icon so that I can see the transmission group delay for this filter design. So once we select any option, we need to re-simulate the structure so that ADS computes those um, additional items again. So while we simulate it, we come to data display and we can add a new graph by clicking on this icon and dragging to the size where I want to see the data. And from here, as you can see, we have few more delay terms being calculated now. I can select delay to one and I can plot it to be displayed on a graph. So right now this graph, if we zoom in, shows delay on the y-axis in terms of seconds and frequency on x-axis over which the simulation has been performed. If we wish, we can normalize the y-scale into a particular unit and by doing that, we can just click on the y-axis label again and type in the format. For example, I can type divide by one nanosecond which will normalize the, the y-axis in terms of nanoseconds. So now the readouts will be directly in nanoseconds. We can find all these values of x and y by placing these markers. For example, I can select this marker and place it anywhere on the desired trace and it will read out the x and y values. We can pick these markers and move the markers using the arrow button or dragging using mouse and it will read out a lot of other marker functionality such as peak value markers, delta markers and so on uh, for our data display. This is it for the part 2 demo of getting started with ADS. Kindly stay tuned for more advanced level of videos covering optimization, Monte Carlo and some of the amplifier designs and so on topics. Hope you enjoyed watching this video. Thank you very much.